Welcome to the Intelligent Investing Podcast, where modern portfolio theory can suck it. A student of the school of Graham and Doddsville and a clergy member of the Church of Warren Buffett, here's your host, Eric Schlein. Hi, this is Eric Schlein. You're listening to the Intelligent Investing Podcast. We have Braxton Yan back on. Braxton, it's a long time to speak. How, how you been? I've been good. How about you? Been pretty good, man. Things are finally opening up back in uh, Philadelphia, so it's nice to be able to go to a restaurant or bar and not have to uh, wear a mask anymore. Yeah. How are things in your neck of the woods? Oh, they're pretty good. About the same as, well, not really about the same as always, but it's uh, it's uh, improving here too. Yeah, cool. So I wanted to talk to you about a stealth. I wanted you to talk to the listeners today about stealth gas. It's, is, now, is that something you're invested in currently? Yes, I am. I have a good position in that. And it's a, um, what I mentioned of your, of what percentage of the portfolio that you, that you run? It's about 4.8%. Um, okay, so that's a pretty decent sized position. So Braxton, tell us about Stealth Gas. They own small gas carriers. And the reason I like them is not because they own small gas carriers, but they have the, the resale value of their fleet. If you take the, their, the, all of their JVs and their, um, they own a few product tankers and an Aframax. And if you add all that up with their, um, with their um, LPG G small gas carrier fleet, it adds up to about $9 a share, which is, after subtracting the debt, and that's currently trading for two dollars and seventy three cents. Wow. Okay, so that's a big deal. Now, are they currently are they making money? Are they burning cash? What do you think the reason is for this disconnect? I think there's a few reasons, and one of them is obviously it's shipping. That's not really very. It's been the, one of the worst industries to invest in over the past ten years, outside of I don't know oil services. <laughs> Yeah, it's one. It's always one of the worst. And the other reason I think is because the debt people really don't know what it's worth. They don't know that they haven't done the numbers. They just see that it has three hundred, like over three hundred million of debt on a, a one hundred million dollar market cap. So they assume it's going to go bankrupt sometime in the next few years. But really, the market cap is just that's just says that it's very cheap. Right now, these assets that are on the books are they? on the books for more than you think the break the break up value less like where how are you calculating what these ships are actually worth but they are on the books for more okay than they're worth but because they have they bought them for more than they should have bought them for and they haven't written them down enough but if you look at the in the second hand market but what the actual transactions for these then you can you can calculate from that what the fleet's worth now, for someone listening to this show and they want to do that kind of research, where do you go to find that data? You could uh, sign up for a guy subscription for Vessels Value, which is uh, it's on the pricey side. Or you could get what? You, do you have a subscription for that? No, I don't. But you can also get, and you can also get um, Value Investor's Edge, which is by Jay Mintzmeyer, and they calculate the NAVs. Or you could also. Where did, where did you get that data from? I got the data from Value Investor's Edge. Got it. Okay. And and I don't, so I'm not familiar with Value Investor's Edge. So are they giving you specific stock ideas and doing the breakout value for you, or what exactly are the data that they're giving you? It's they take. Well, they do have stock ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Mintzmeyer writes up stocks he likes, but. They, and then they have to break up values. It's a pretty comprehensive service. Okay. So were they, were they calculating a breakout value for this company? Is that kind of how you discovered it? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So and then it's interesting. And you think the, and, and according to this publication, they, they think that the data, that the breakup value would be around nine bucks. Interesting. And it's pretty uh, solid data that they get. Got it. Now. Are there, there could be some risks. I'm just trying to like devil's advocate that there could be some risk that the company has a really, say, horrible track record of burning cash and they end up just taking on more debt and doing more dumb things. And well, they have, 
What do you see are the risk in that situation? The risks, it's the majority shareholder has um, complete control of the company. Okay. And he has all these poison pills. So if you want to get, if you want to get rid of them, then you can't actually get rid of them. Got it. That's a... Does he, does, does the large shareholder have an incentive though to have the stock price rectified or does it just doesn't really care because he, make, he, he sort of milks the company for cash or what's the deal? I'm not familiar with this company at all. So I'm just curious. I think he wants the share price higher because he wants it to trade up to NAV so he can raise more stock to buy more ships because he wants to grow the fleet. Has, has he sold stock though below NAV before? Because I've seen shipping companies do that with horrible management team where they just sell stock and, and it's terrible yeah there, there are a few companies like that they did sell they have been pretty good about that they have sold they did sell stock about at ten dollars at about i think it was around 2014 but it wasn't for an i think it was roughly nav at the time got it got it interesting idea and the guy so this guy what's the guy's name who's this majority show quite a name now so this guy i'm not even gonna and he's Greek. It's a Greek. It's a Greek shipping company, so it's even worse. You can't get worse than the Greeks. No, no offense to the listeners out there in Greece, but you have the the reputation precedes you guys. So for this Greek guy, then it's Greek, is it? A, it's a Greek shipping company, I assume, too. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you have this guy, large shareholder, Greek shipping company. Is now is this large shareholder also on the management? Does he have like control over the operations day to day? What what what? Or is he just very passive? Um, he's, uh, he's involved. Okay. Is he getting a large salary? Yeah, he, he does get a rather significant salary. It's not crazy, but all sh all shipping companies actually may, uh, take very large salaries. Yeah. Like on a percentage, like if you have a $100 million company, a $1 million salary is, it's only 1%. But then if you get the large salaries companies that are like, supposedly really good co corporate governments and they get even larger sal salaries for just doing the same job. This is a messed up industry. So what is this guy making per year? Um, I believe about a million dollars. And, and what's the market cap of this company? Did you say it was a hundred million? hundred million. Yeah. It's like a 1%. Okay. Interesting. Interesting idea for listeners uh, out there who want to take a look at this and do your own due diligence. This is not uh, investment advice and neither Myself or Braxton is liable if you lose money on this. But interesting ideas like always, Braxton, you seem to be quite have quite the eye for finding the very undervalued or potentially undervalued uh, under the radar cheap stuff. So keep them coming. It's always a pleasure to have you on and uh, I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Intelligent Investing Podcast with Eric Schlein. If you'd like to connect with Eric for questions, comments, feedback, ideas, or to inquire about being on the show, please contact Eric at intelligentinvesting at gmail.com. So in the words of Charlie Munger, I have nothing to add.